Hi there YouTube, it's AC Dot here again. Uh, time to bring you another instalment of my machine tools and this time it's uh, my 944 boring bar. This is my Van Norman 944 boring bar. It's not the S model, it's only one speed. Um, I uh, obtained this uh, via my, uh, my father many years ago. He helped me buy it and I paid him back over a, a, a number of months after I got it. Uh, it's a very old machine, dates back to the 50s I believe this one. It's even got the war finish uh, plaque still on the machine. Uh, wonderful old machines and kind of a backbone of the British engine rebuilding fraternity. A lot of uh, little shops back in the day had these. They would uh, open the bonnet, strip the engine, put them on the engine with the engine block still in the car, bore the engine out home the cylinders, wash the engine out, and then rebuild it without even removing the engine from the car. Maybe uh, some of you guys would frown on that, but that's how things used to be done many, many years ago in the UK. Um, again, this is a portable machine and it can be easily, you know, easily moved and slid about. That can be carried out into the field uh, and, you know, put on the top of uh, small tractors and things like that to, to bore engines in situ. Um, the beauty about this little machine is because it's so small, it's easy to use. There are a couple of little uh, drawbacks that you have with these machines. Uh, one of them of which is, uh, you've probably noticed already, it's uh, it mounts to the block. Um, now, obviously, uh, if, if the top of the block isn't square to the axis of the main bearings, you will quickly find that you'll bore your cylinders um, not square. So one of the th things you must do if you're interested in building a nice um accurate engine is to uh, ensure that the uh, top face of the block is actually parallel to the uh, mains and on these a series for example that's uh that that can be the case but a lot of the time there are there are a few a good few thousandths of an inch out so a cursory skim is sometimes needed on the milling machine uh to get that nice and square before the boring machine can be mounted the beauty of these machines uh, and these older machines is they'll do They'll do small cylinders, so they'll do the old Austin seven engines and things like that, and they'll also do the uh, you know the, the smaller bore Cooper nine nine sevens and the eight fifties and all that sort of thing. So this machine will do right up to over four inches um, uh, with the appropriate uh, cutting bits. Um, I've had this machine probably uh, oh must be fifteen years something like that, um, and I bought it second hand. Uh, I think it cost me the massive total of £360 back in the day, uh, which was a good deal then, and it's a very good deal now because these go for a lot more money. Um, I've done a few upgrades on it, um, which we'll we'll get into it in a minute. Uh, this is a 240 volt machine, runs single phase, uses about 500 watts of energy while it's boring a cylinder. Uh, it runs down automatically and uh, using using that as a stop it hits the stop and switches itself automatically all these machines do that um, with, a, with an adjustable stop um, we'll see it working a little bit later but let's move on to the tooling the most important thing when you buy one of these uh, 944 boring bars is uh, the tool kit um, having the tool kit is vitally important because without it you can't use the machine some of the uh, parts inside that machine that, that are, are critical are obviously the setting mic for setting up the uh, cutting bits uh, for, for, for obviously making sure you get the right diameter. The cat's paws, which are used to centralise the, uh, uh, the cutting uh, machine in the cylinder bore. And they're also uh, used for guiding the, um, uh, the progress of the boring bar through the cylinder to give it support. Uh, there's a few other tools in there. Um, Allen keys, etc., for tightening up cutters and various other bits and pieces. Uh, that's a little homemade tool I use for extracting the cutter out of the machine. Uh, and then over here, uh, these aren't original. Uh, these are, in fact, aftermarket um, new cutting cartridges with uh, that have that have um, been been made specifically to take modern carbide uh, inserts, indexable inserts. Uh, the original cutter, uh, I believe I still have one in the bottom here, uh, which is which is that one. 
uh, comes with a uh, small piece of carbide which you originally used to touch up on the machine. Uh, there was a uh, there was a grinding um, attachment on the machine, of which part of it is still in this kit. There's the bracket for holding it. I no longer use that. Um, you can still get the grinding wheels, but there's no point nowadays because if you use these new cutting cartridges uh, with the indexable inserts, it just uh, you know the modern carbides cut better um, and they stay sharper longer, and uh, you just simply rotate when the edge is gone. On these particular uh, cartridges, uh, it uses a negative insert, which means uh, on a triangular shape like that one, there's six cutting edges. Uh, that will literally last a very, very long time. So, some of the other modifications uh, I've done to this kit include the addition of uh, another cutting cartridge, which is for chamfering the cylinder bores. That's very, very helpful. All these cartridges come from uh, the United States. Beam Equipment is uh, where I bought these from. Uh, they do an excellent range of uh, aftermarket parts for upgrading and maintaining your, your uh, Van Norman machine. A uh, couple of the other things I've done is the original bore clamps, which hold the, uh, hold the actual machine into the engine, were basically... Um, marginal at best I never got on with them very well and I was advised by people who use these machines um, to uh, replace it so what I did is I replaced the bore clamps I've still got the original ones but now I use this main bearing bar which goes along the main bearings under the block um, and then it uses studding which screws in and goes up the cylinder and then that allows the uh, the foot of the machine to clamp to and then pull itself onto the block and that produces a very very strong and reliable mount so when you're offset boring and you've got quite a load on one side of the machine it's nice and stable um, that's the foot that goes in the machine that does the clamping uh, I've modified this as well the original one unfortunately uh, was well worn out and uh, the thread uh, was 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 pulled right off it. So I've made a new one out of um, EN24 material uh, and then threaded it to match. And you can see that one's got, uh, there's no problem with the thread on that. And being EN24, it's a little bit harder. So it's just half hard steel. So effectively, uh, that's a lot stronger than the original mild steel version that was in there. Um, so that that uh, that modification will outlast me, no doubt. Um, going on to the adapters uh, that screw into there. Um, these are simple, uh, just uh, pieces of M12 studding. Uh, and then I have different lengths for different blocks. So the shorter one there is for the small bore A series. So that'll be the 850s, um, 997s, 998 blocks, not, um, 1098s, etc., and this uh, slightly longer one, uh, obviously you can see there's no end, but you just take the uh, the T, uh, the top hat T shape off the end, screw it onto there and lock it on. And then this then becomes the bar for using in the bigger ball blocks. One of the other things I managed to find uh, was uh, an original copy um, or an original reproduction, I should say, of the manual. So uh, having that is not only an interesting read, but it does give you the information on how it's supposed to be used. As you can see, it's an American machine. Gives you all the details. Uh, this this particular um, uh, this particular uh, manual is for the 944S, I believe. Uh, so I wasn't able to get one, um, but it does include the rather aptly named Sucker Alter, uh, which is a, uh, a little attachment that goes in uh, that you connect to a vacuum and then you can suck away the chips so you can bore it out while it's in an engine and it won't even leave any chips in the engine. So that's, uh, you know, a rather interesting uh, uh, part of history, which I've, I've never seen one, but I'm sure there is one in existence somewhere. Obviously a list of tools that go with it and... Um, some instructions there on how to unpack it, oiling, greasing, how to use, etc. Um, it gives you, you know, uh, information on how to clamp it down, 
Uh, there's an interesting uh, picture when I was talking about earlier about the bore clamps. I don't use those. They, uh, they have a habit of coming loose if you're not careful, especially if you're offset boring. Uh, there's the, a picture of the original cutting tool and obviously how to set it. Uh, and another interesting one there uh, of the original sucker outer, which I mentioned. So all in all, a useful document and I was very happy to uh, get myself one of those. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, when you have old machines, it's always nice to get the manuals and things like that to be able to, uh, you know, appreciate how they're meant to be used and how they was originally designed to be used back in the day. OK, here it is set up on this uh, block. This is a uh, classic uh, 998 Cooper block. Uh, as you can see, the cutters there set up. It's all nicely centralised in the bore. The cutters there waiting to, to be uh, spun around and passed through. So uh, going around to the back of the machine, you can see the clamp in place, holding everything down, the power cables connected. All we need to do is switch on and go to the feed and let it bore. Nice and simple, flip the switch. And then all we need to do is engage the feed, which is as simple as that. There she goes, boring away. That's a 30 thousandths of an inch cut in one pass. After boring uh, the uh, bore to size, we can change the chamfer bit and that will go in and just gently uh, take put a nice chamfer on the edge of the block. In order to facilitate that, I use, there we go, get that focused. I use a, uh, a dial gauge um, just attached to the, uh, the feed bar, touching on the top of the machine, and then I can get all, all the chamfers on every bore the same. So with the boring bar moved out of the way, what we can see is a beautiful finish. So these machines might be old, but they still produce a lovely finish in the bore. Anyway, the trouble is with a boring machine is that's only half the job. In order to be able to use that now, we need to hone that cylinder before it's ready to use. So what we did there was cut this particular cylinder almost 30 over, but actually we left about three thousandths of an inch in the hole so we could hone that out, ready to get the appropriate finish for the rings. So what we do now is we'll use a ball gauge and we'll check our progress. So this ball gauge has been set up to read the zero is the finished bore size for the piston that goes in there. And as you can see, that is almost three thousandths of an inch too small. So that's the perfect amount to leave for honing. And as we go down the bore, we can see that that's the only variance in that is a few tenths. So even though it's old, that machine still cuts the mustard. Excellent piece of kit. Because they're so simple, these machines also um, have a bit of a reputation for doing a, a bad job. And that's usually because people haven't cleaned the swarf out where the block, uh, um, sorry, where the machine mounts to the block. So clearly if you leave swarf under that, the machine won't sit flat. Uh, sometimes I've seen the machine where the bottom's been damaged, it's been dropped and burred, therefore it won't sit flat on the block. Um, uh, the good news is here on my one, uh, I've actually tested it on uh, many engines now. And I know uh, by doing various tests that it's actually, uh, it bores very, very straight. So I'm very lucky to have got a machine that uh, needed minimal effort for such a good price. But all in all, you can't really argue these 944s make excellent machines for the home machinist. That just leaves me to say um, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, as ever, like us and subscribe and uh, help me make more videos. So thank you very much.